Whether new shooter, longtime gun owner, or even police officer or soldier, your handgun needs a Crimson Trace laser sight or light. Get the confidence and reliability you need to protect family, home, and country. Crimson Trace. I'm a gun owner. Your views, advice, and questions are the driving force of gun talk. You know, I don't think that guns are scary things. Visit us online at www.guntalk.com. Call Tom now at 866-TALK-GUN, 866-825-5486. Let us know what you think about the gun-related issues of the day. Now, back to gun talk. All right, talking about, well, a little bit of this, a little bit of that, uh, guns, ammo, oh, what's new? What's going on out there? And, and frankly, what are people talking about? And one of the things, obviously, people are talking about is AR-15s. People want, it's still hugely popular. It's a great platform. And I guess, let me put those two together for you. The reason that AR-15s are so popular is because it is a great platform. It does so many things very well. They're fun to shoot. Generally, if you're shooting, particularly if you're shooting two, two, three, five, five, six, uh, low recoil, uh, they fit people well. They're generally lightweight, although we do have a tendency to load them up with lots of junk. And we take a what was a really nice six pound rifle and make it a really heavy nine pound rifle. But hey, it's all about accessorizing, right? Well, what if you can build your own? Uh, and you can. A lot of people do that. So we want to talk about that. What's involved in, in that whole process? So Kyle Hale is jo- joining us right now from HLF Manufacturing. Hey, Kyle, how you doing? Good. How are you? Well, excellent. Now, HLF Manufacturing, you guys make AR-15 lower receivers. Is that correct? Right. And one of our flagship items is the 80% lower receiver, and that's, oh, that's what we're popular for right now. Okay, that's what I want to talk to you about, because 80% lower receiver, if you're really in the know, you know what that means, but most people have no idea what you just said. So take us through what it is and what it means. Okay, so it's we start with a forging, like how uh, Colt or Daniel Defense starts with, and we take it to the threshold of what the ATF, uh, BATFB, would consider a firearm. And we, we take it just below that threshold, and um, we sent it to the ATF, and they determined that it's not a firearm. And okay. it's not a firearm because it still has the fire control pocket solid. There's no, we haven't done any work there. So you can't put a hammer in it, can't put a trigger in it, can't do anything like that. Um, all you can do is put the magazine and the buffer tube on. Okay. And from there... Uh, we sell it to customers, and we also sell it to other manufacturers, but mostly it's individuals who want to make their own gun with uh, a small drill press or maybe a milling machine. And um, this, this small market, it's, we're all really close, and we all work together. And, you know, uh, there's companies that make jigs, and, and they help you finish it if you're not as experienced as other, you know, someone with, that's been a machinist for 20 years. So. Right. Okay, so what we're talking about is that it's an AR-15 receiver, except it's not been manufactured quite to the point. So the ATF, the federal government, looks mm-hmm. at it and gives it its blessing and says, this is not a gun. So it does not have a serial number on it, correct? That's correct. We don't even put fire or safe on there. We let the customer do whatever they want, and uh, they like it. Okay. Now, obviously, people are, are sitting there going, scratching their heads and going, wait a minute. You're going to send this to me, and I have to drill out some holes, and then... I am actually making the firearm, the, the receiver, is, first of all, is it legal? And two, do you need any kind of manufacturer's license to do this? No, you don't. As long as you do not make it with the intent to sell. So if you buy 40 of them and you plan on selling them to your friends, that's illegal. But if you okay. buy one or two so that you can make a sporting rifle or a hunting rifle for yourself that doesn't have a serial number, you can do that. And you can, as far as we know... Uh, you can do that in all 50 states, and it's been legal since 1776. So, obviously, you have run this past the ATF. When people are getting nervous about this, do you have some documentation to give people some peace of mind on, on doing this? We do. Uh, when customers ask, we can send them a copy of, it's called a determination letter, and we sent the ATF exactly what we sell, and they said, this is not a firearm, and every uh, letter is, uh, documented with the ATF, and it's given a number. Like, I guess you can call it a serial number for a document, mm-hmm. and uh, that way it's in the history books. And so they're protected and we're protected. 
Okay, so it's legal, and people can get the paperwork that says it's legal. So what do you have to do? Once you get this 80% receiver, what's required to make this thing where you can start building on it? Well, you need to drill three holes uh, that will eventually be the hammer pin hole, the trigger pin hole, and the selector hole. And that's very straightforward, very simple, especially if you buy a jig. Then uh, the jig just guides the drill bit right through. You could even use a hand drill for that. Huh. And then the, the next step is a little bit more difficult, and a lot of people get overwhelmed. But the jig and all the advice, the uh, the forums that are out there, they're so helpful. But the next part is you drill multiple holes kind of in the top. Like if you're sitting the real receiver down like it's a part of a rifle, you drill through the top, yeah. um, not all the way through. And then you make those pilot holes, and then you use a little bit larger drill bit. And uh, mm-hmm. then it's mostly gone, and you use an end mill in your drill press. And... Uh, you put it to depth, you move it around, and that smooths out the walls, and then you're ready to go. That's a firearm. Now you can just start building it. And I guess and that brings us to the idea that there's still a lot of people, obviously, who don't know that you can build an AR-15 yourself or what's involved with it. So say you get to that point or you say, look, guys, I just want to go ahead and buy a receiver that's ready to go. Now, what's involved in building an AR-15 from a receiver? From a receiver, that's 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 the easy part. Um, it's even easier than building your own lower. You you can start with a, I guess an upper half is what we call it. The upper half includes the upper receiver with the barrel and handguard already uh, attached to each other. Um, mm-hmm. If you're uh, more of a do-it-yourselfer. You can buy a separate barrel of your liking and a separate upper receiver, and torquing those together is a, it's a sensitive thing, but most barrels come with, uh, uh, it's already head spaced, and you just bolt it down to the specifications, and those are available online. Uh, uh, I guess a real popular build website is AR15.com, and I know I'm, when I first got into this, I was all over that website, and yeah. I think the most important, people, most important thing people need to know is they just got to Google it, you know? <laughs> There you go. You can find out. Now, you've got uh, 80% lowers for uh, 223 and for 308 size receivers. That's right. We use the uh, the accepted EPMS or SR25 magazines, and uh, that's that's getting really popular right now. So, hmm. Now, on your website, you also have uh, upper receivers. You've got, like, bill kits. So you, you really can sell people everything they need to build their own AR. Yes, that's. And people call and they say, what do I need to build? What do I need to do this? I want just a, a rifle I can go to the range. I've never owned an AR-15. And we say, we have everything you need. It's it's two items. You buy this, you buy that, and uh, we'll ship it to you. And uh, if you have any questions, call us. We'll walk you through it. Send us pictures. If you think you messed up, we'll, we'll send you a picture back on how to fix it. Um, one of the big things, we try to separate ourselves from the other people making 80% lowers by providing just outstanding customer service if you're if you're in the houston area we'll come help you or you can come to our shop and and look so okay and they can do it on the now if you want and i want to make sure people understand if you want a lower receiver that is that you don't have to drill any holes into that mm-hmm. is in fact that is a firearm and it needs to go through an ffl and you can do that you can just buy one of those but you still just have the uh uh basically a stripped receiver and now you have to start putting everything in it with a bill kit Right, and that's that's where you would start if you had a if you had finished your eighty percent lower and you need your lower parts kit and mm-hmm. you install that and we'll help you with all that too. That's that's all. We'll, you know, we've sold lots of receivers to guys that have never built their own gun and they got in over their head, but we walked them through it, and uh, <laughs> you know they're happy shooters now, and that's what we like. I'm, I'm just I'm laughing because I'm just thinking uh, if I did this, you would have to be helping me a lot, and I'm probably the uh, the typical guy. You'd say, "Okay, slow down here. We're going to talk you through the process." That's right, and it, we we get that every day, and, and we love it. We love helping people, um, you know. And I can't I can't count on I don't even think I can count how many times we help people in a week, and it's just it's it's fun for us, and we love it. Terrific idea. Now, I would uh, suggest that anybody that wants to do the 80% lower better check their state regs, because I don't know, like in a state like Connecticut, uh, mm-hmm. where they're registering ARs, I don't know what that means. So you better know what's going on in your local uh, area and in your state, right? Right. And, that, and when people ask us, what about my state? And all I can tell them is, 
uh, we have a, a federal license, and we, we play by the federal rules. And uh, But when your state changes its law, they're not going to tell us. The ATF doesn't tell us when they change their laws. So staying on top of the federal rules is, is hard enough as it is. But, yeah, I know Connecticut is having some, some law changes. And, right. But, yeah, definitely please know your own laws before you start getting into this hobby. There you go. Now, the website is hlfmfg.com, right? That's right. Okay, so hlfmfg.com. You can see everything there, and if you have questions, give them a call and fix them up. And uh, then we'll be seeing you guys. Uh, you're going to be at SHOT Show, right? I think we will, yes. Absolutely. Well, that's a great. Right? It's a terrific idea, and I know that people have a ton of fun. It's kind of like tying your own flies, building your own rifle and going out and shooting it. That's just mm-hmm. uh, a whole different level you add an awful lot to it. It's almost like loading your own ammo, isn't it? Yes, that's that's what people compare it to. You know, it's 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 a hobby for a lot of these people, and they've built the basic AR. They've built they've built every kind of AR on our eighty percent lower receivers. That is terrific. All right, hlfmfg.com. Kyle, thank you so much, my friend. Oh, thank you for having me. All right, we'll see you later. All right. All right. Want to build your own? Well, there, that's one way to do it. Check it out. And you can certainly Google it, do a little search engine for 80% lowers, find out all about that. It's legal federally. Check your local regs, your state regs on that. All right. Don't go far. When we come back, we'll be talking a little bit more about what's going on as people head to the SHOT Show. We'll be talking about training. It's time for you to get serious about self-defense training in 2014. The Ruger SR-45, a large caliber pistol with a trim, ergonomic profile. Like the popular Ruger SR-9 and SR-40, the SR-45 is perfectly sized to be comfortable and controllable with a slim, ergonomic grip and narrow slide. It features an adjustable three-dot sight system, Ruger's unique reversible back strap, an ambidextrous manual safety and magazine release, and built-in Picatinny rail. The Ruger SR-45, another rugged, reliable firearm from Ruger. Smith & Wesson bodyguards carry more comfortably, walk more confidently. When it comes to personal protection, nothing beats a bodyguard. Choose the lightweight, compact, and concealable Bodyguard 380 pistol or the Bodyguard 38 revolver, both with a built-in laser sight. The Smith & Wesson bodyguards carry more comfortably, walk more confidently. The 45 Auto, also known as the 1911, is the standard other defensive pistols are measured against. No matter what pistol you carry, techniques developed around the 1911 are vital. You know you need training. And you know your concealed carry class definitely was not training. Now Gun Talk presents an exciting DVD, Fighting with the 1911 with Tiger McKee. Tiger's unique training style will have you drawing, moving, shooting, and running your gun better, no matter what style pistol you prefer. At ShopGunTalk.com, you can order our DVDs of Tiger's instruction. ShopGunTalk.com also has a two-DVD set, including Concealed Carry One. Get both for the information you know you need. This really is life and death. ShopGunTalk.com has DVDs, books, and other essential gear. ShopGunTalk.com. That's ShopGunTalk.com. Ever thought about building your own AR-15? Well, what about building your own AR-15 lower receiver? We're HLF Manufacturing, and we make 80% lowers. Build your rifle the way you want it. Use the parts you want. Have it all shipped to your home. We also have uppers, parts, and other things you need. We even have complete build kits to make it really easy. Visit HLFMFG.com for the whole story. Want your opinion to make a difference? Log on to our website and take the Gun Talk poll, www.guntalk.com. Now, back to Tom. All right, 2014, excuse me, we are in it big time. The question is, what are you going to do with it? 
uh, as more and more people have gotten into, well, they've they made the commitment somewhat to take care of themselves, to get a gun, get a concealed carry you know, permit. But have you really made a commitment? That, that's a question. I had a, I got to share with you this. Excuse me just a second here. Okay, back with you. Still getting over this stupid cold. I had a, an email from a concealed carry instructor. He says, look, Tom, he says, I got a call the other night from one of my students from like five years ago. And she has her permit. And she called me. She says, I think there's somebody in my house. Is my gun loaded? What? <laughs> yes, she was calling her instructor to find out if her gun was loaded. He, obviously, he did not know. She didn't know if it was a semi-automatic or revolver. Turned out it was a revolver. She wanted to know where the safety was. I, where do you even start? Well, let me talk, start with somebody that really knows this stuff and, and runs what is the grandfather and the Harvard, if you will, of gun schools, gun fighting schools, Buzz Mills from Gun Site. Hey, Buzz, I, I bet you've heard stories like that before. Oh, yeah, I have, Tom. Hey, listen, I understand you. I can tell you're getting over a cold. I am, too. I, I'll tell you, I've been out for a week on antibiotics, and I think I'm going to get the shot. That's, that's the objective here, but... <laughs> um, Merry Christmas. Happy uh, Happy New Year. Thank uh, you, sir. We're off and running in 2014 again. We've got uh, we've got over 120 classes scheduled now. Last wow. year we ended up with close to 200. we got um, just a plethora of uh, new stuff coming out, and uh, it, we're just excited to be off and running in 2014 and really feel bad for those folks, folks up in the uh, northeast suffering from the snow. <laughs> No kid. Now, when you say you got new stuff coming out, I mean we look at it and say, okay, there's there's firearms training, and then there's firearms training. So, what do you do that's new? Well, um, we have uh, we have classes for teams. We have classes for couples. We have uh, uh, vehicle defense class coming out this year. We've got low light classes. Um, different environments. It's still all about fighting. It's still all about uh, Fighting with a handgun or a carbine, and uh, we're just expanding the offerings to, uh, you know, our clients. Uh, our clients go back many years, most of them, and mm-hmm. uh, and they 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 email us, they call us, they want to, want to train in different environments and different disciplines and that sort of thing. You know, so, I, uh, I think I think that's a point that's worth mentioning. Is you get a lot of repeat business, and I know people would say, well, what? If you've already taken the class and you've learned the stuff, why would you take another class? I'd love to get you to address that. Well, as you're well aware, you've been you've been here many times. Mm-hmm. Um, firearms, uh, skill at arms is is a highly perishable skill, and it requires uh, constant practice and uh, to to stay on top of your game. Like anything else, you know, um, a golfer that plays once a year. Is not much of a golfer, mm-hmm. so um, any any uh, any any uh, mechanical skill like this uh, requires uh, practice. When I was shooting competitively back in the eighties, um, you know we practiced every day, but for just a uh, a purely defensive um, requirement, uh, as you would have uh, going to and from work every day, if you're not involved in uh, in, in the firearms arts. At work, um, mm-hmm. you know, you still need to you still need to come out to the range. You still need to get there, and uh, a lot of people don't have the time just to just to go willy nilly for a couple hours now and then, or they don't have the facility, particularly folks in the city. So what they'll right. do is they'll come to gunsight, and, uh-huh. uh, and they want to do something different. They want to incorporate uh, something they did before, and we do a lot of special work too for people that uh, you know you can do essentially design your own class. Well, the uh, what you're describing is, and, and look, you're, you and I are both pilots. You wouldn't want to fly with a pilot who flew only once a year. Absolutely not. <laughs> you know, I mean, you want somebody who is getting what we call in aviation recurrent training. They're going back and getting tuned up. And to a, some extent, what you're really doing is getting an expert to be a set of eyes because you really cannot critique yourself well, can you? No, you can't. And I don't care... Uh, what it is, uh, particularly in uh, in firearms and particularly in uh, in aviation, um, you can you can in both of those, as we have both done, you can get out there and, and work by yourself and just keep perfecting those bad habits until <laughs> you'll never get rid of them. 
<laughs> yeah, really. Uh, no. And and then you get with the instructor. He goes, why are you doing that? And you're, what do you always say? You always say, doing what? Right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> or he'll say, where did that come from? You didn't learn yeah. that here. Right. That's right. You're going, I, I don't know. He says, well, we're going to have to get rid of that. So we're going to spend some time getting rid of it before we can start building it back up. And that's honestly what you get is a uh, – it's like going to a golf pro or a tennis pro or somebody else. They watch you. They go, okay, look, I see what you're doing. And often what you think you're doing wrong is not really what you're doing wrong. It's like two or three steps before that that causes the problem. Yep. And, and you know, one of the things in, uh, with firearms that is that people are so bad about is they lose trigger control first. Mm-hmm. You know, sight alignment is, is pretty easy. Uh, right. But they lose that trigger control, and they'll start anticipating, and then you know, then they're then they're off the target, out of the ballpark, and it, and it happens. It can happen uh, in a very short period of time. Well, now, now gun sight. I mean, we just should explain to people. Gun sight is located uh, about a thirty forty five minute drive north of Prescott, Arizona. You're on I don't know what two thousand acres out there. You got a lot of ground. Yeah, we're we have twenty five hundred acres. We're we're uh, 30 minutes south of I-40 and 40 minutes uh, west of Flagstaff, two hours north of Phoenix. We're three hours from uh, Las Vegas. We're going to drive up there next Monday, see you up there. There you go. And, I'll uh, see you there. Uh, well, we will indeed. Uh, and, well, and we're easy to get to. Most people uh, most people uh, fly. And, you can fly uh, into Phoenix uh, and drive up. It's easy. Yep. And hey, Buzz, let's do this. Coming up from down in the valley. Okay. Uh, Let me. You know, they get... People look at the national weather all the time, and they see uh, Phoenix is 110 <laughs> degrees. But when it's 110 in Phoenix, we're at 90. That's exactly right. Well, it's, uh, the website is gunsite, G-U-N-S-I-T-E dot com. they got a list of the courses. they got the schedules. You can look it up. You can see what's, what's there. And I will just give it my highest endorsement. I go there as often as I possibly can. Buzz, I will see you in Vegas, partner. My friend, listen, thanks for calling. Enjoy talking with you this morning. Have a great day. Travel safe. Absolutely. All right, everybody out there, make the commitment. 2014, your year for training. One of Talker Magazine's 100 most important radio talk show hosts in America. You're listening to Gun Talk. Heard every week at this time on great radio stations across America. Stay tuned. Gun Talk is coming right back. Covering all aspects of gun ownership every week on this fine radio station. You're listening to Gun Talk with Tom Gresham. All right, we're talking about making a commitment. 2014. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know. You, you got a pistol, you got a holster, you got your carry permit. But have you made the commitment? Because all that is is hardware. That's like saying, well, yeah, I've got a set of clubs, so I'm really a good golfer. I don't think so. If you haven't made the commitment to getting lessons and practicing, you're not as good as you could be and you're not as good as you should be. And one of the people that I go to frequently as much as I can and when I, you know, I go get training, he's one of the guys I call is Tiger McKee from Shoot Right Academy in Alabama joining us right now. Hey, Tiger, how are you? I'm doing great. It's good to be back, sir. Well, I'm glad to have you. Now, for those who don't know, uh, in addition to your great book, uh, The Book of Two Guns, and the other things you do, you also did a DVD with us. It was just Fighting with the 1911, which really is more than that. It's all about gunfighting, and we've got that DVD on our website, uh, shopguntalk.com. Also, uh, they can get that and your book at your website, which is Shoot Right, and it's S-H-O-O-T-R-I-T-E dot O-R-G. Yes, sir. We've got both of those. And uh, I think the video, the DVD, I still old-fashioned call them videos. The DVD, I think, is really good regardless of what type pistol you use because a majority of the techniques apply across the board as long as you're working with a semi-auto pistol. I agree. And and we specifically made sure it applied to everything. And and you've got some things in there that are specific to a 1911, because there are a few things, not very many, but there are a few things that you need to know about a 1911. But we use that as the platform. But it's really about uh, 
you know, the, the draw, the presentation, the shooting, the malfunction drills, moving while you're shooting, communicating, uh, getting to cover, uh, all the things that you need to know. And people say, yeah, 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 I, I know that. I say, well, it's one thing to know it. It's another thing to really get instruction at it. And and it's good. And look, I think you would agree with me. As good as books are and as good as DVDs are, all they do is can introduce the subject to you, but you really need to get on the range with a good instructor, don't you? Definitely. Uh, the reference materials like that, they'll show you how something is done. But then to really get a good grasp of it, and especially like what not to do or what you might mm-hmm. be doing wrong but you're not even aware of it, you need to work with a good instructor to pick those things up. One of the things that I worry about uh, is if somebody's going to self-teach this stuff, and and we, we, we're concerned about that when we do the DVDs and all, what I don't want is for somebody to go out to the range and all of a sudden they become high-speed, low-drag, doing fast draws when they haven't built the skill set. That can be setting yourself up for an accident or something going wrong. And with an instructor, you're going to start slow. Your instructor is going to make sure you're doing everything in slow motion well before he or she allows you to speed up. Yes, sir, definitely. They're going to be looking for every detail because with the majority of these skills, it's the small details that make a big difference in how you're performing those tasks. And our main priority whenever we're doing anything with a firearm, or especially if you're in a conflict, you've still got to be focusing and thinking about safety, applying those skills safely. There are so many things that people don't think about. I, I've actually created a, an acronym for it. I call it NTOT. And you hear it every time you do a class. It's, I never thought of that, right? Yes, sir, exactly. A lot of this stuff, when it comes to fighting with firearms, and it, you can call it self-defense or personal protection, but you're in a fight defending your life, uh, They go against what our natural instincts tell us. We're not really designed to fight with firearms. So it takes training and then a lot of repetition through practice to actually learn these skills so that you can apply them on demand. You bet. Uh, Now, let me ask you, I'm going to deviate from the training for just a second. got to ask you, where are we on the katana? Everything's pretty much put together. Uh, We're going to be doing the press releases and that kind of stuff here in the next few weeks. We finally got everything ironed out. Uh, One of the things we've been holding up on MHT, the company that's actually assembling and building, putting these things together, they're producing almost every part for that rifle. So Mm -hmm. it set us up a little bit of time delay in getting them ready. They're machining Mm. the uppers and lowers themselves, the barrels. So we're trying to make everything in-house so that, one, we control the quality. And then also we're not having to rely on other companies to supply us with the quality stuff we need. This is an AR-15 that you've designed, and it is a fighting AR-15. That's what it's designed for, right? Well, that, but also the way it's designed, it's perfect for, like, three-gun competition. Uh, A lot of people are using ARs where it's legal, of course, with two, two, three to hunt with nowadays. So it kind of works across the board the way that we've got it set up. It's very versatile. All right, well, when that is ready, be sure to let us know. We'll get you back on. We'll talk about that, okay? Definitely, yes, sir. All right. Now, uh, Shoot Right, you're located uh, near Gunnersville, just outside of Gunnersville, Alabama. And you've got, I'm looking at your website now, you've got uh, a lot of classes scheduled. But you also are available, and this is, I think people would find this interesting, you're available for private instruction, either like one-on-one or small groups. Yes, sir. That's one of the things that we do. Uh, I really like working with individuals or small groups because, you get the time you need, you know, one-on-one to really get into depth on this stuff. Um, and it's a little more expensive for sure, but it's truly the best value for your time and money spent. 
because one day or two days of private instruction is like four or five days of being in a large group. You bet. Well, I mean, just so people understand where I'm coming from, it's, uh, last year I was over in that area and I called you and said, do you have any time? You said, I got a half a day. I said, I'll be there. We ran up there. I said, just give me everything you can give me in a half a day on the AR. I mean, I'm going to buy some instruction. And then recently we couldn't work our schedules out, but we're going to make it happen. We're going to get you in here. We're going to take our whole uh, office staff to the range for a day or two and have you work us all through that. I mean, I just want people to understand that's how much I believe in this. I, I write personal checks, and I do this with you because I know how important this training is. Yes, yeah, sir. It's If you're owning a pistol firearm and you anticipate you may have to use it for self-defense, you've got to have training and then practice it. Yeah, yeah I mean, you absolutely do. It's It's no good, like I say, just having a – set of clubs does not make you a golfer. Having a hammer does not make you a carpenter. You got to know how to do it. You got to get somebody to teach you. Um, so if people want to sign up for a class, they can check out, see when you're having it, or they can schedule a private one. Go to your website. Is that the best place? Yes, sir. We've got our schedule up there, and then our main contact is Gretchen, my wife. She handles all the important stuff like that. Uh, we can book, you know, for group classes, and then we've got also the dates that are available for private instruction listed as well. That'll work. And in the meantime, they can get your book, and they can get the DVD either at your website, shootright.org, uh, or our website, shopguntalk.com. Tiger, thank you so much. Thank you, sir. It's great to be with you. All right. We'll talk, talk to you later. Professionals who depend on their weapon depend on Excess Sights, the leader in American-made gunfighter night sights for personal and home defense. One dot, one solution. See demonstration videos from top trainers and industry leaders at ExcessSights.com. Upgrade your carry gun, rifle, and tactical shotgun with Excess Sights. Contact Excess Sights at 888-744-4880 or visit ExcessSights.com. If you need a gun, you need Excess Sights. Tired of overpaying for one concealed carry holster after another that is flimsy, hard to hide, or just plain uncomfortable? At Alien Gear Holsters, less than $30 gets you a professional quality holster that's super stealthy and ultra comfortable. Every Alien Gear Holster is backed by a forever warranty, a 30-day test drive, and free shell trades for life in case you buy a different gun. AlienGearHolsters.com AlienGearHolsters.com TopGunSupply.com carries a large selection of fine firearms and accessories. Get all the parts you need for your Sig Sauer, HK, and Glock pistols. Grips, screws, recoil springs, sights, barrels, magazines, holsters. The list goes on. Our knowledgeable sales staff, professional service, great prices, and super fast shipping are here to help you. Check us out today. TopGunSupply.com TopGunSupply.com So you want to shoot clay targets, maybe some skeet or trap? Sure, but ammo's hard to find. So load your own ammo, as generations have done, with Mech Reloaders. Save money and discover a fun hobby. It's simple, and you can customize loads for different kinds of shooting. Always have ammo on hand. Stock up when there's nothing in the stores. Get started now. Visit mechreloaders.com. That's mecreloaders.com. Questions? Comments? Please email Tom at GunTalk.com. During the show, you can call Tom at 866-TOM-TALK-GUN. Now, back to Gun Talk. Hey, by the way, don't forget to sign up to uh, win a $750 gift certificate, a free deal with Timney Triggers. They make all sorts of great triggers for a lot of your different rifles. All you got to do is go to GunTalk.com slash win. We're giving that away as well as some other stuff. You'll see all the details there. GunTalk.com dot com slash win and we're going to continue talking about 
training, uh, make it a commitment in 2014 to be a better shooter. Uh, obviously, we're talking self-defense training. We're talking about other kinds of training. Basically, learning to operate your firearms at a higher level. And joining me to talk about doing that with your rifle is Tim Fallon from FTW Ranch. Tim, how are you? Fine, Tom. How are you? Well, I am excellent. Uh, how is the world treating you out there in Hill Country? <laughs> well, life is good. We're very busy and training lots of folks up and having a great time. Well, good deal. Uh, explain to people, I guess, give us the, the cliff notes on FTW, how it started, what it is. Well, we have what's called, Tom, as you know, you've been, you've been there involved in it within the, uh, the SAM program. It's S-A-A-M. It stands for Sportsman's All-Weather All-Terrain Marksmanship. And basically, Tom, in a nutshell, we, we work with hunters that want to become better marksmen. Um, within ethical, reasonable hunting distances with their own equipment. Uh, we don't try to sell them anything. We're equipment neutral. We love all guns, scopes, and bullets. And, you know, look, they bring their hunting rifles, their hunting ammunition, and um, we teach them how to, you know, instead of perhaps being a really effective shooter at 150 or 200 yards, we might, well, the, many folks will leave their great 300 or 350-yard shooters, and that's especially important for mountain hunts and sheep mm-hmm. and goat hunts and that sort of thing. And then the other side of the house, we have well, basically two courses. We have SAM Precision, which is medium caliber, longer distance shooting. You know, we do a lot of work out to 500 yards. And the, the mentality there is if you make a good 500-yard shot, then a 350-yard shot would have to make it as a chip shot. But we do cheat. People always try to get closer. And then the other side of the house is the SAM Safari, which is dangerous game, big bore work, and medium caliber work, too, of course. And there, as you've seen, we have these – life-size targets of elephants charging you and buffalo and leopards and lions and yeah it's <laughs> it's great fun it's a hoot i mean it's great fun but you learn a lot one of the things you do that i am so proud to associate with you on this is you're not out there saying yeah we're going to teach you how to shoot an elk at 800 or a thousand yards right you know it's, no, we it, um, you you just don't. Find that i find that uh, i find it personally deplorable i think you know there's there's so many there's so many things that can go wrong in that scenario. Um, for instance, we also, as you know, we train a lot of military snipers on the training um, all right. year round, actually. And even these guys will tell you, and there's some really good shooters in that world, as you well know. Mm-hmm. But, you know, calling wind the first time correctly at 800 yards, and most people don't have any realization, even the 300 wind mag. I mean, you get a 10 mile hour wind, and you're pushing that bullet as much as five and six feet. Yes. And, you know, the problem, again, with an elk, you hit him in the guts, he might flinch, you won't see that at 800 yards, and off he walks off and dies a week later. It's just a tragedy. You know, and what you tell people is, look, what you're going to end up with when you come away from this is you will know the distance that you can shoot and reliably hit, and you had people say, look, the value to me was I knew I couldn't take the shot. That's huge. Right. Right. It, it is huge, and that's... There's really three things we focus on. We want you to know when you leave, where does your 100% end? At the moment in time when you know you're not 100% sure you can kill this animal in the first shot, which is our job as a hunter. I mean, that is mm-hmm. absolutely our job to kill it in right. one shot, not hope you can hit it. Um, when you know or are unsure of that, then stop. Don't shoot. It's okay. Get closer. Tomorrow's another day, whatever. But nothing is worth wounding an animal. It's absolute, you know, it's a tragedy. And then the other thing we focus on is, is the ethics. We we try to get people to realize that, you know, um, yeah, you may feel like a cool guy by killing something at 500 yards, but by the time they leave our course, they know how lucky they were to have hit a metal, a nine-inch metal plate at 500 yards. If there wasn't a good wind <laughs> call behind him, he likely wouldn't have done it. Yeah, exactly. Hey, so, Tim, hold on a second here. i got, I got to take a quick break. We'll come back. We'll talk a little bit more about long-range shooting and uh, maybe even a little bit about uh, calibers and what's going on with the equipment side because I know you see everything there. We're talking with uh, Tim Fallon from the FTW Ranch. And, by the way, uh, the website is ftwoutfitters.com. Again, ftwoutfitters.com. I have been there. One of the things they have, in addition to, like, world-class instructors, they have the most incredible piece of terrain. The land there is so varied. Uh, Brush, tight shots, long shots, medium shots, targets that charge you, elephants, Cape Buffalo. It is just seriously cool. You will really learn to be a better shot there. We'll talk about that when we come back. Gun Talk stands for safety, personal responsibility, and common courtesy. To be a part of the show, call 1-TOM-TALK-GUN. Gun Talk will be right back. I 
I, I had to chuckle. I'm listening to that last commercial play, and a guy says, I could have been a Navy SEAL. I'm thinking, yeah, well, if you'd like to get trained in shooting by a Navy SEAL sniper, you can go to FTW Ranch, right? Tim, that'll, you got them there. Yes, we do. Actually, we have several instructors from those special operations groups. And, uh, and look, some of our instructors uh, are not from our special ops. They've just been, you know, uh, long-time hunters, and they've been trained properly in sniper training and so on and so forth. And um, we have a saying that, you know, just because you're a sniper doesn't make you a good instructor. Yeah. But uh, we, we, the, the beauty of our program, Tom, is I think, and especially on the dangerous game side, um, we've brought the, the specific training from the special forces groups, you know, weapons discipline, muzzle discipline, and so forth, into the program. And uh, that's one of the things we focus on is letting people build their confidence and make them a safer hunter. As you know, in 2012, we had four African PHs shot by American clients. Ooh. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it's a tragic thing. Um, I say we, meaning uh, uh, you know, that happened. But fortunately, none of them were our, our students, but... Um, it, it happens when things get bad. We focus on uh, muzzle discipline, especially especially when things go wrong, like all of a sudden an elephant charges or a buffalo, and mm-hmm. you know people do crazy things when when, uh, when things get crazy. You know, one of the things I'd like you to address just quickly is the idea that you don't have to be a macho man to be making good shots at long ranges. You got a lot of women and youngsters that actually get out there. You know, Tom, you're right, and that's one of the favorite things about what we do. It is so rewarding to see a young person or a lady new to hunting or whatever come in, and invariably it almost always happens. You can get the old, uh, you know, hunter who thinks he knows everything in there, and pretty soon by day two or three that young lady or young man is out shooting. Pretty soon they're paying a lot more attention than they did on day one, I assure you. Well, and I have instructors all over the country telling me the same thing. By day two or three, the women are out shooting the men, and you know why? Because they listen. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> they're they're an open book, and it's it's nice to see that happen. It's rewarding, and actually, you know, so we find some of the old timers get upset about day two or three when it happens, but by the end of the end of the four day course, they're applauding them because it's pretty wonderful to be around. There you go, and you don't really have to have super duper equipment. I mean, good equipment's always important. But you don't have to go spend eight grand on a rifle and a, an optic, do you? No, Lord, no. I mean, there is such some of the new factory guns coming out from a lot of different people. Of course, are just fabulous guns in the thousand dollar price range. But what we commonly see, Tom, and this is what I would leave your your listeners with, is you know we we would recommend you spend at least fifty percent as much on your scope as you did your rifle, and even as much as a hundred percent would be a good yes. idea. Yes. Um, by the way, after all these years of doing this, we finally. Finally had our first $1,000 scope come in on a $100 gun. And amazingly, it worked. <laughs> <laughs> well, when I was the out there, around, of course. Yeah, when I was out there, we were shooting that Ruger American. You're talking about a $350 retail rifle, and people are banging steel at 800 to 1,000 yards with it. It was amazing. <laughs> well, as I say, those new factory guns are just unbelievable. The manufacturing tolerances today, they've, they've come a long way in that business. It's really something. We got good ammo, good optics, good uh, guns. I mean, we've never had it this this good before. But you got to go get some training. So uh, uh, tell them again how they can find out more about it, if you would, please. Well, give us a call at uh, area code 830 234 4366. Again, 830 234 4366. Or go to our website. It's uh, ftwoutfitters.com. And the website has a schedule on it, and it has a good description, and you can even download our catalog of the courses and which one might suit you best and so forth. That's perfect. That's perfect. Tim, thank you a bunch. It is a great place. It is a fun place. Great instructors. Uh, I love FTW. I just got to get out there again to do some more of that. So I would suggest that if you have any interest, give them a holler. It's it's very much worthwhile. Firearms, ammunition, recreational and competitive shooting, training, hunting, and yes, even politics. You're listening to Gun Talk. Call us now at 1 866 825 5486. That's 1 Tom Talk Gun. Or reach out to us via email at tom at guntalk.com.